Hey, 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 this is Beverly Bozeman. I am an author and creator of Speak Queen, an encouraging platform for women. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Be sure and share this broadcast with your friends and your family. Be sure and share this broadcast with any women that you know who might need some encouragement. So today, my broadcast is entitled Stop Stopping Yourself. And um, disclaimer, I have notes and I will be reading from my notes, like literally. I have been told that I can sometimes go off on a tangent and miss the point. I can go kind of uh, uh, left field and the people won't get the message. So I guess my better judgment, I have detailed notes and I might just sit here and literally read. I just want you guys to get the message and y'all just bear with me, right? So stop stopping yourself. What I mean by that is when we're trying to change, we'll feel weird. And that's the dying of a habit, habits or conditioning. And our habits, um, whether small, large, or we've had them for a long time, they can take over and we will be on autopilot with certain things are concerned. For example, we are so conditioned to calling people through their um, program numbers and our phones, our passwords, our PIN numbers. We're just so conditioned to bam, 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 that if we had to tell somebody what the number is or what the password is, we have to, you know, write it down or whatever, we would be, it, we'd be lost. We'd just be lost. We'd be like, uh, it's phone number. Let me see. Uh, I know there's a seven in there somewhere. Uh, and we just be so pitiful. But if I hand you the phone with the keypad, bam, 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 bam. Uh, you type in the password, click, 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 click. Pin number at the grocery store. Boom, 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 boom. Good to go. Because we are uh, we are on autopilot with our habits. And so when we begin to like put forth change or if change is um, mandatory, whether we like it or not, but it needs to take place, we'll kind of have this weird feeling about it. it. It can be psychological, it can be physical, it can be emotional, but we will have some type of feeling, right? And if our bodies, our minds, our bodies are like, I don't want to do this, I really don't. We will begin to fight it. We will put forth effort to kind of fight it. And it won't be like super dramatic. It's real subtle things. Subtle things that we do and we don't realize that it's fighting or kicking against the pricks of what it is that we're supposed to do. Here's some examples. So the feeling will be so uncomfortable that we begin to fight it. And we will fight it with one mental self-sabotage, right? And this is what I mean. It will come in the form of questioning ourselves, questioning our abilities, questioning the goal or the task at hand. If you are going back to school, right, after X, Y, Z amount of time and you're going back to school, it can be when you're signing up for classes, it could be the day before you go. You're going to sabotage yourself. Can I really do this? I've been out of school for like 20 years. Oh my God, I don't even know if I can do this. I don't know if I can, you know, if my mind is going to let me remember things. And do I really even have the time? When I get off work, I'm just so tired and wore down. And, you know, and I got to fix the kids their dinner. And Lord have mercy, I got, you know, PTO the third Thursday of every month. And then there's Bible study and I got to, you know, make sure mama is squared away before, you know, I just, I don't know. We will self-sabotage ourselves with questions and moments or periods of doubt. And the next thing you know, it's pushed back, it's canceled, it's suspended, it's whatever. Mental self-sabotage. That's how we fight our feeling of change, right? And the second one is not completing goals on purpose, but indirectly with time wasters. Let me repeat that. We will fight the feeling of change 
by not completing goals on purpose, but indirectly with time wasters. That one hit home. Gave myself an uppercut on that one. And what I'm an example of that is social media. I'm not saying that social media is a time waster. Anything can be a time waster. If you have an agenda that you're working on, if you have a goal that you're supposed to be accomplishing, but you take a detour to take care of something else that can wait, that can wait, then you are participating in time wasting. I am the guilty party. I'll testify, Pastor. I am the guilty party. I'm working on my next book. And I had set aside uh, XYZ amount of time to work on it, right? And so, Bev is doing it. But my mind is really someplace else. I had something else that I needed to get done after my writing. But it was like in the forefront. It was in the back. It was on the side. It was up around the corner. I was like, I got to take care of this thing, right? So my writing is important because it's a part of what I have to do. And I was like, my mind was on this. I was like, let me check Instagram to see if the X, Y, Z is the one, two, three. Pull up my phone. Next thing I knew, 30 minutes had gone by, child. Oh, my time is up. Bam, let me go. Take care of my business. Not proud of it. It's just the truth. So we will do things like that when we don't want to focus on our goals. Um, and I haven't written since last year and I really didn't want to take the time to write. That's just honest. Um, my reasons are my own. I didn't want to take the time to write, but I knew I needed to. I really did. So I decided to indirectly waste my time. But we do that. We, especially if it's, um, if we're using social media as our time waster, we're so used to grabbing our phones and scrolling and checking on so-and-so and seeing what happened with the X, Y, and Z. We can also do that by, well, let me go by and check on so-and-so on my way home because we don't want to go home and take care of what we need to take care of. I haven't seen her in a while and da 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 da, da. We just got to take notice of the time wasters that we participate in right? And then the third thing is we allow distractions and use the act of helping as an excuse. We allow distractions. People calling, girl, I really need to talk to you. Oh my God. I don't know. I don't know. I just need to talk to you. You just talk to this chick three days in a row straight and it's the same foolishness about the same dude. And instead of you saying, look, I'm in the middle of something. Can I call you back? And taking care of your business, you will sit and you will listen. Probably because you don't want to do it anyway. And you're just letting her be your excuse. And you ain't doing her no favors by listening to the foolishness. No way. I used to be the queen of listening to foolishness. And I used to be the queen of sharing my foolishness. Okay? So I know about that. Um, We know when we are being distracted. That's just a side note. We know when we are being distracted because if you are trying to accomplish a goal anything that is not mandatory is a distraction let me say that again when we are trying to accomplish goals anything that takes our attention is a distraction now i don't mean emergencies those are in a category all by themselves. We know when something is an emergency. We know when something needs to get done, something has to get done, and when we want something to get done. You know, if somebody's hurt, you know what I'm saying? That's literally, that is literally an emergency. There's no questions about that. We know what emergencies are. But homegirl calling you, talking about uh, Rufus again, that ain't no emergency. She can wait. You you been knowing he was a cheat. You cheated on him when he was with her, so you knew he was a cheat. So why are you calling, talking about, oh my God, I think he cheating. Get off my phone, wasting my daytime minutes. Is you don't literally say that, but that need to be going through your mind. Let me girl, let me call you right, right, right back, okay? Oh my gosh, let me call you right, right back. And and don't until another time. 
You ain't lying. You were calling back. Hmm. All right, moving on. Do I feel myself going off on a tangent? My life, my life, my life, my life. Okay, so the results of stopping yourself. I have two. There are plenty others, but two main results of stopping yourself. And when I say stopping yourself, I'm really talking about change and um, accomplishing goals. That's kind of what I'm meaning about that. The results, two of the main results are time passes and we're still in the same situation. You can look at your life and tell where you have stopped yourself. When it comes to health and fitness, if you are in the same physical condition that you were in last year and it's, and it's not a good not saying it's horrible but it's not the physical condition that you said you would be in like i've been saying okay this is it i'm getting rid of this muffin top and these three chins i'm gonna do it and it's the same time the next year telling the same lie so i know that Time will pass us by. Time's going to pass anyway. And if we keep stopping ourselves, we will still have the same situations going on. You can look at your life and see where you have stopped yourself. And I think that's one of the major problems with us accomplishing goals is we will not be honest with ourselves about where we stop ourselves, how often we stop ourselves and how we will assist people in stopping us. All right. Um, and another result is people who are supposed to be helped because of you will not get the help or they will have to wait longer than necessary. That's not my creation um my somebody else said that i've heard a whole bunch of um, speakers say that motivational speakers and preachers say that so that ain't me but it's just so it's so like profound it's such a punch in the gut and i used to think certain things about myself in regards to helping people, right? And I would drag my feet about doing what I was supposed to do because I was like, mm, mm. they just said that, you know, when people tell you things like you're supposed to help people or you, if you're a singer, you need to be singing. People will really enjoy your voice or wow, you cook cakes from scratch and they taste like that. You need to be selling them. You can save people a whole lot of time and money and have happier birthdays with better tasting cakes and, you know, stuff like that. You could inspire other people and we just, mm, you know, we don't really think highly of ourselves enough to know that there are people attached to us. I believe that. I believe that there are people attached to you who are going to benefit from you accomplishing your goals. And I tell my husband all the time, we don't know who's watching us, good, bad, or otherwise. Somebody's always watching, good, bad, or otherwise. And if you have people who are watching you because, and I, I don't mean necessarily on social media because everybody doesn't get on social media and do um, broadcasts or lives or whatever. You have people at your church who are watching you, people, people on your job, in your neighborhood, in your family, that grocery store that you frequent. People are always watching you. And if you're not doing what it is that you are supposed to be doing, they can't do what they're supposed to do. We just don't know the domino effect or we don't know the chain link fence that we are a part of, chain link fence of people that we are a part of that can change your community, change the world. We just don't know. We may never know. And it's probably for the best that we don't know. But we we cannot 
keep stopping ourselves because we are holding people up. All right, I'm going to give you two, maybe three solutions, and then I'm done. And I got my notes. Um, solution one, have a reason why you will stop stopping yourself. And I've heard motivational speakers say, know your why in life. Know your why. Know why you're going to do it. Know why you're going to. <clears throat> and I guess that's kind of the same thing. But you have to be a little selfish for just a minute. And you have to say, I'm going to stop stopping myself. I will stop stopping myself. Solution, that's like <clears throat> the main solution. Solution number one, you got to stop stopping yourself and you have to have a reason. If you know that, there is a family that can be um, brought back together, relationships that can be mended, kids that can have a happier home, better finances, and all you have to do is do your one part. Go back to school and meet this lady who's going to be sitting beside you and be that listening ear for her. And you love being there for people anyway. And that can help a family. And inside that family is a girl. And the girl is going to grow up to be a teacher. And that teacher is going to teach a student that's going to find a cure for cancer. We don't know if something like that will ever happen. But it could. We don't know how something like that has already happened. So you have to have a reason why you will stop stopping yourself. All right. Uh, the next one and the final solution is spend more time with you and God. If you don't have a relationship with God and, you know, that part doesn't apply to you, scratch it out, exit out, spend more time with you or whatever. But I'm going to say spend more time with you and God because I got to spend time with God because he's all I got. I mean, I got family and stuff, but <clears throat> anyway. Anyway, anyway, spend more time with God. So <clears throat> imagine, I don't know if y'all remember, and this was sometime last year, I think. Um, social media, I think it was Facebook. It might have been Facebook and Instagram because they're connected. Facebook and Instagram, I think, they crashed or they weren't available, excuse me. Um, and I think Periscope had already been discontinued. So social media had come to a halt. And I know people were just losing their minds, not just the ones who conduct business through social media, but people who use social media for socializing and being nosy and start fights and all this other stuff, right? They really did not have anything to do and they were going crazy, but check this out. Imagine if you could not access any of your social media, you could not access any of your entertainment through your Roku apps and um, whatever. No television and no um, surfing the web just for fun. And you had to go old school. Imagine how much peace you can have and how much thinking you can get done how many answers you can find, um, how many new parts of your brain you can use. And, and what I, I mean by that is that you have no choice but to think. You have no choice but to sit in solitude and listen. I was told years ago that we have all of the answers that we need already inside of us. It's just that we choose not to think. We've seen enough stuff in life to make decisions. We've read enough books. We've listened to enough sermons. We've got enough advice. We've done enough trial and errors to where we can create our own answers that we can hold until it's time to release them. I think we really do have all the answers we need inside of us. I mean, you know, 
outside of, you know, what God tells us, because we got to think. We don't, we don't think like we should. And so if we spend more time with ourselves and more time with God, we will get more answers and we'll be forced. Read my notes here. We're forced to experience that part of us that we have suppressed. When we were kids, we had imaginations like crazy. When we were teenagers, we felt like we were unstoppable and the world owed us everything. Got in into our 20s and got this independence. The world is mine. I'm chilling. I'm enjoying myself. But as life started hitting us in the gut and knocking us back with those uppercuts and elbows and suplexes and body slams and clothes lines and all of that, we get up, teeth hanging out, eyeball swollen shut. We stopped imagining, we stopped believing in ourselves, and we developed these habits to get us through certain times. And we develop these habits to get us through certain trials and tribulations. Like, I, I just need to get through this. Okay, I, I'm going to do this just so I can get through this so the pain can stop, so I can stop crying, so I can, you know, survive until I get my next paycheck. We created these habits, right? And the habits became so plentiful that they became connected to each other like a little train set, right? And we just started moving through life on autopilot. So we stop ourselves so that we don't disrupt the cars of the train because then we have to stop and pay attention. Anyways, I think that's about it. it wasn't so bad working with notes today, but you know, it is what it is. I hope and I pray that y'all got the gist of the story. Stop stopping yourself. We get one time on this side, my dear sisters. We get one time on this side. We don't get no do-overs. And the whole thing that keeps us in our habits is that we care about what they say. Who is they? Who is they? Where were they when you needed help? Not necessarily about the money. But when you needed somebody to hold you up because you couldn't hold yourself up, they were nowhere to be found. Anyway, I feel myself going off on a tangent. But um, yeah, I think I think that's about it. Stop stopping yourself. We we don't have the how did I hear it? We don't have the time that we think we have. I heard Latoya Kia say that. God, how did the saying go? God sparing the creek don't rise. I got a birthday coming up. And it came fast to me. And I'm like, you got to be kidding. I was just graduating high school the other day. But it is what it is. Stop stopping yourself. You'll never know how great you are if you do. All right. That's about it. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Be sure to release your genius. Pull off the impossible every day. And be positive when you speak, Queen.